Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and this video is going to be everything you need to know about the Reno Pro from Monport. Let's get started by taking a look at the Reno series. And I call it a series because this machine comes in two different versions, a standard version and this machine, the Reno Pro. Now there's a lot of similarities between the two machines and there are a couple of differences that I'm gonna catch up on in just a minute or two. Now the Reno series is going to be a huge upgrade over the 40 watt CO2 desktop machine. The Reno, of course, is going to be a 45 watt CO2 laser machine and has a much larger work area coming in at 12 inches by 16 inches. And next up, the speed of the Reno machine. This is going to be the first difference between the standard machine and this Pro machine. The Pro machine can achieve up to 600 millimeters per second, whereas the standard version is only going to top out at 500 millimeters per second. And since I'm talking about the differences, the rest of the differences are going to be in the controller display. On the Reno Pro, the machine is going to be light burn compatible. And when I connect up to a computer, I have my choice of USB cable connection or Wi-Fi. On the standard version, the machine is not light burn compatible. And the only connection up to the machine is through USB cable. Those are going to be the top three differences between the standard machine and the Reno Pro. The construction and the fit and finish of the machine is top notch. And I take a look at the front and the sides of the machine. These are going to be all aluminum construction with the back and the bottom of the machine being all steel construction, making for a very solid and rigid machine. The top is going to be black mirrored acrylic, giving it almost uh, a black piano finish, which really fits in with the new styling of the Reno series. The machine controller and the display, as far as I can tell, it is all built into one unit, very specific to the Reno series. Now don't let the small display fool you. There's a lot of powerful features built into this display. I've been able to work with it a little bit off camera and I am still learning. There's just so much packed into this. But a couple of the key highlights are is a full keypad here for moving the laser head around. This machine is now big enough that I can't physically grab the laser head and move it around the work area. I do have to use the keypad for that. Um, I can also do basic uh, functions on here, like manually setting the power level when I go to pulse the laser just to test the laser or do a mirror alignment check. The features also continue on when I have the computer connected up to the machine. When I send a program out to the machine, it's actually stored in the controller and I'll be prompted if I wanna give that file name uh, its own special name and then it's stored in here. So next time I run that file, I don't need a computer hooked up to the machine. So that is pretty cool. The other thing is, just like I mentioned, the program stay in the controller. So if I'm batching jobs out, once I finish the first job and I load in a new blank, I can simply hit the green start button on the display and it's gonna run that same program. So I don't have to keep on going back to the computer to hit the start button. I can do that right from the front of the machine and it doesn't sound like much, but it actually does save a lot of time if I'm running a home business with the Reno machine. The menu system within the display is very easy to navigate, making it very easy to recall previous programs I've loaded into the display. And to further simplify things, once I have my material in the machine, there's a whole separate frame button that I can hit to make sure that the laser is traveling over the intended work area of my material. The only thing that I saw was a little bit odd has to do with the exhaust port and the hose that comes with the Reno machine. Well, the hose, there's nothing wrong with the hose itself. I got a nice uh, five foot length here, maybe even a little bit longer and it's nice and flexible and high quality. But it has to do with the diameter of the hose and the port on the back. 
This is five inches and it's literally the in-between size of a four inch exhaust port and a six inch exhaust port, which are the two most common sizes on a laser machine. So I'm a little bit puzzled as to why the Reno has a five inch exhaust port that makes some of us users may have to get an adapter to either step it down to four inches or step it up to six inches. Certainly a, a visit to a hardware store and we'll be able to piece something together, but most exhaust filter systems like uh, this 150 watt are going to have a four inch port on it and the much larger units may have a six inch port. What I've been doing is simply not overcomplicating things and overthinking them. And I just take the five inch hose and I actually can place that right on top of the air purifier and it actually makes a pretty good seal. And when I run the machine, I really don't detect any smoke smell within the work area, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I think that covers all the major things for the exterior of the machine. And now it's time to take a look at the interior and some of the neat stuff going on inside the Reno machine. The metal exterior is followed to the interior with steel and aluminum construction. The newly designed laser head allows easy access to the mirror for cleaning or replacement. There's also three easy accessible adjustments for setting the perfect mirror alignment. Another view of the laser head shows us two Allen head screws and when loosened, the entire air assist nozzle assembly with the focusing lens is easily removed for maintenance. And what's really neat is this precise laser head allows for that air assist uh, assembly to be put back exactly in the same spot, which is one of the reasons why the Reno machine gets such great precision on its projects. Focus of the work material is easily set with this hand dial. I can turn this by hand and move the work bed up or down or for even more convenience, the machine includes this tool that I can place on the top and now I can really adjust the height of my work material very quickly. Focus is set very quickly and easily with this plunger focusing tool. I simply push the plunger down to reset it and now I just raise the tool bed up until that plunger is fully retracted. When it pops all the way up, I've got perfect focus right there and now I'm ready to start my project. If I have a special project and focusing with the plunger just isn't a good fit, the Reno does come with a step focusing gauge with an indicator at 10 millimeters for the natural focus of the stock machine. One last thing on the laser head is we do see that there is a red laser dot which is going to assist me in getting material placed in the correct spot or moving the laser head to the correct start position, you know, depending on how I'm looking at things. And that laser is located on the back side of the laser head, conveniently tucked out of the way. The height of the work table is going to be adjustable upwards of four inches through the four corner poles with this adjustment dial that we just took a look at. For more versatility within the work area, as we see the machine does have honeycomb and I can remove that out. And now that the honeycomb is removed, we see that I have even more depth to put some really tall work materials inside of the machine. We've also got a series of slots across the back and the front, and that is because the machine comes with a full set of blades for doing cutout work. I've got two of those blades removed and I can put them inside. If you're not familiar with these, these are great for those of us that do a tremendous amount of cutting, especially if I've got some smaller pieces. These blades are going to allow those small cutouts to fit into the removable cutout tray across the bottom of the machine. In fact, we'll take a look at that removable crumb tray right now. That completely removes and actually a little tip that I can share with you right now is if you still don't have the height you need to fit your work material inside, you can always go to the outside and put the machine up on some blocks in each of the four corners and get that extra height that you need inside of the machine to get the laser head properly focused. In the background, I'm sure we can hear the exhaust fan that's in the back of the machine and uh, maybe you can hear the airflow from the air assist pump that is built into the machine. 
Having ran this machine, I find that it's a good balance between that lighter air pressure for engraving material, but still strong enough to get nice clean cuts through material. Now in order to shuttle the laser head around with all the speed and precision, the Reno is going to use two of these little smaller motor controllers, one for the X axes and one for the Y axes. These motor controllers are gonna be tucked inside the cabinet on this side, and this is something really cool to see on a machine down in this price point. In comparison, a much larger laser machine is going to use a drive controller that looks something like that. The last thing we're going to check out is this connection port that's located underneath the controller display. This is where we would plug in a rotary attachment. I'm going to finish the video out by just running a project. I have some 3 8 inch solid pine board and I'm going to be recalling one of the programs that I have built into the display. It's a holiday ornament and I'll do a nice fade out with that. So before I get that started, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like. It's a really great way to help the laser channel grow and more so it's an excellent way to connect video content like this with other great viewers like you. And until I see you in the next video, learn, create, and share. Now let's get this set up in the machine and we'll watch the Reno in action.